great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever I live.
Good morning. Happy New Year. We have started the new year of the church this morning. It is the first Sunday in Advent. Um, and as always, it's a joy to gather with you on this uh, first Sunday in Advent and hear from God's word. This morning, we will be uh, hearing from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. Um, and it might not be a text that you are super familiar with. It's uh, from the second chapter. There's lots of Isaiah texts that we know very well, but um, this one may not be as familiar to you. So we will um, uh, be looking at that this morning as we dive into God's word. Um, to follow along with us in worship, you can do so with the bulletin if you grabbed one of those. Otherwise, everything is printed for you on the screens up front. Uh, before we rise and share the piece, uh, I do have two announcements to make, and you will hear these a little bit later, but um, in our prayers. Uh, one is, uh, many of you remember the intentional interim pastor, um, Andrew Lazel. His wife went to be with the Lord uh, this past week, uh, Carol, and uh, her funeral is this coming Wednesday. And I left the note of where it's taking place, um, but if you call me this next week, I can get you that information if you are interested in that. Um, also, um, I want to make an announcement uh, that our dear sister in Christ, uh, Linda Cuffert, went also to be home with the Lord um, after uh, just a very short stay in the hospital. Um, and so we will remember the Cufferts in our prayers this morning, especially for Doug and for their daughters. Um, her funeral will be here. Uh, visitation will be uh, on Friday from 10 a.m. until noon, and the Friday will be er, and the funeral will begin on Friday uh, promptly at noon. Um, we will remember both of those families in our prayers this morning. Let us rise and welcome those that we are worshiping with this morning. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ here. Good morning. Peace of Christ. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Peace of Christ. Good morning. Good morning, dude. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. And you may be seated for our opening hymn, The Advent of Our King. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Confident of receiving God's great mercy, let us confess together that we are by nature sinful and that through our thoughts, words, and deeds, we have sinned against our God and deserve his punishment now and eternally. Almighty God, we repent of our sins and ask for your forgiving grace in our lives. Be merciful to us and for the sake of Jesus, grant us remission of our sins so that, as your redeemed people, we may greet you in Advent hope, and with trusting hearts serve you in time and in eternity. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The introit this morning is responsive from Psalm 118. Uh, the number one, which you will see printed on the screens and in your bulletin, will be the men, and number two will be spoken by the women. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. O oh Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We remain standing for our hymn of praise.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sin and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 2. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days at the mount of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up upon the hills and all the nations shall flow to it and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes of many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Romans 13. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, 
and any other commandments are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of law. Besides this, you know the time and the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. And then let it, so let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is also the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. As we begin a new church year and reflect on how Jesus is coming fulfilled the Father's plan for our salvation, we speak the first article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning. It relates the loving work of God the Father for us. He has created and still preserves us, and in his grace, he has brought us to the beginning of a new church year. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. You may be seated, and at this time we would like to invite forward all the children that are present with us for a message for you guys this morning before Sunday school. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? It is great to see all of your smiling and shining faces. No, he's not having any of it. Okay. 
Um, so this morning I brought with me a, a clock. Who knows how to tell time on a clock such as this? Couple. All right. Well, how it works is the small hand, what does that tell us? The hour. And the big hand tells us the minute, right? Now, some of you look at a digital clock, right? Because a digital clock tells you exactly what time it is. It might say 0930, then you know it's 930, right? But if we were going to make this look like 930, hey, there's no battery in this. Um, if we were going to make this look like 9.30, you see the 9? The, the small hand is pointed towards the 9. And the large hand is pointed at the 6. How does that make any sense? Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> How does that make any sense? Okay, so, yeah, there's in between the 12 and the 1, right? There's, there's 5 minutes in between the 1 and the 2. So the 1 is 5 minutes, the 2 is 10 minutes, the 3 is 15 minutes, 20, 25, 30. I know some of you guys, you younger kids, you're looking at me going, who cares, right? I just asked mom what time it is. But time is important, right? Because if you're supposed to be somewhere, let's say that you are going to go to a movie, and the movie starts at 2 o'clock. You guys are going to be late for the movie. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> right? So if the movie starts at 2 o'clock, what time do you need to leave, do you think? At 2 o'clock. So if you left right at 2 o'clock and the movie starts at 2, are you going to be late? Yes, you're going to be late because you've got to drive there. Right? And it takes time to drive there. And do you guys like to see all the commercials beforehand? To see all the new movies that are coming out? No, that's disgusting. Okay, we just want to watch the movie, I guess. But you got to get popcorn, right? And you got to get drinks. You got to go to the bathroom. You got to get a good seat. So you have to make sure that you are ready to leave on time. So if your movie was going to start at 2 o'clock, and we live, let's just say we live a few minutes from the movie theater, what time do you think we should leave? Around 1.30. Okay, so this is my firstborn, right? Always early to everything. She does not get that after her father, okay? 1.30. So if you left at 1.30, you would probably be there with plenty of time. I would not leave at 1.30. I'd leave at like 1.45. But no matter what you have to do, you have to leave at a certain time so that you're at the place you want to be on time. Clocks are very important. Because they tell us what time it is. And they tell us and remind us that certain things are going to happen at certain times. Well, this morning we start the season of Advent. It's a very special season. And does anyone know what that word Advent means? Anyone know what Advent means? It means that something very important is coming. Something very important is coming. And what do you think is coming that is very important? Christmas is coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. And that's very important because who comes at Christmas? Santa. Oh, no, my kid said Santa. <laughs> okay, who else comes besides Santa? Jesus. Yeah, whose birthday is it? It's Jesus' birthday. That's right. Jesus comes. And he comes as a baby in a manger. And why, why does he come as a baby in a manger? What's he going to do after he comes as a baby in a manger? He's going to do something for us. Die on the cross, right? He's going to die on the cross. He's going to save us from our sins. He's going to rise again right? At, at Easter time. But this time of waiting, we're not just waiting for Christmas. We're also waiting for something else. Jesus, yeah, but what about Jesus? Besides Jesus' birthday, is Jesus going to come back? 
yeah, we're waiting for Jesus to come back. But now here's the thing. We don't know the day or the time, the hour, the minute. We have no idea when Jesus is going to come back. But what we do know, okay, so we can't use this clock. This clock is worthless. It doesn't help us, okay? But what we do know is that he's going to come soon, right? And we do know that we are supposed to be ready. Well, how, are, how do we be ready for Jesus to come back? Pray. pray. Okay, we can pray. We can read the Bible. Man, Liam, you're on a roll today. We can read the Bible. We can pray. We can go to church. We can learn about him, right? Whether it's maybe mom and dad are reading us the Bible or reading us a Bible story, right? There are lots of ways that we can be ready. And we have to prepare our hearts. And we should be reading his word. We should be gathering together at church. We should be praying to God. These are all great ways that we can be ready. Because we don't know when it's going to happen. But we know that it's going to because God makes that promise to us. And God always keeps his promises. Okay, so let's ask God to help us this, this morning be ready. Dear Jesus, we look, for the, we look forward to the day when you will return. Help us to live in a way that we will be ready for when you come. Help us to open your word and to read it, to bring our prayers to you, to gather together in worship as we sing you praises. And Lord, help us to live the life you have called us to live. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can head to the back this morning with Miss Paulette and with Miss Gail this morning. And we will continue our time of worship this morning with selected verses from Savior of the Nations Come. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. These are the opening words of the prophet Isaiah. With the heavens and the earth as jurors, Almighty God, the prosecutor, presents his closing arguments against his defendant, his own people, Israel. The people have abandoned their creator. They have abandoned their redeemer. Their worship is insincere. Their rulers are corrupt. They lack mercy. They oppress the weak. And they are only living for themselves and their own pleasure. They are guilty. And the sentence for such a crime, the land will go desolate. And they will be burned with an unquenchable Fire. Now, similar words of condemnation follow in the Old Testament reading that was read to you a few moments ago from the second chapter of Isaiah. But in that section of Isaiah, the prophet abruptly shifts to words of mercy and a description of a future glory in Israel. He says, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of mountains. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Well, what does all that mean? From Isaiah's time until the time of today, Isaiah's prophecy about a mountain, and specifically about a mountain being established above all the other mountains, and about a people streaming to hear the Lord, and about this establishment of peace, is a prophecy that has been, well, greatly misunderstood. The question that usually is discussed here is, where is the mountain of the house of the Lord. Now, for many Jews during the time of Jesus, the mountain was Jerusalem itself, the city on a hill. And there, they believed that God would deliver the people from their enemies, specifically Rome, and that a kingdom would be established there on earth, and this kingdom would have a ruler that would rule over all the nations. For this reason, they rejected Jesus as being the Messiah, the one that they had been waiting for. Because Jesus did not bring with him glory and might, but rather a cross. He didn't bring with him political freedom as the people were hoping for the Messiah to bring. Instead, he brought with him forgiveness. So where then is the mountain of the house of the Lord? If it's not there. For some Christians today, these are the, the folks who, uh, like the author of the Left Behind series, right? Um, the the premillennialists. Uh, they would answer in a very similar way as the Jews. That the mountain of the house of the Lord refers to Jerusalem itself. But they believe that one day, before the resurrection of the dead, Jesus will come. And he will set up a government and he will rule the nations for a thousand years. A, a literal thousand reign rule of Christ. They believe that the godly will be in charge and that the ungodly will be suppressed. But if it's not there, where is the mountain of the house of the Lord? For modern Jews, it's the land of Israel. The place where they reside. And it is that land becoming the exclusive possession of the Jews themselves. Gentiles converting to Judaism is of no real primary concern to them. Because even when Gentiles convert, well, there are still distinctions. After all, a Gentile is still a Gentile. So if it's not there, where then 
is the mountain of the house of the Lord. If we look through history, medieval times specifically, the popes during those times said that it was either Jerusalem, a pilgrimage destination for Christians, or it was Rome, which was at that time the very center of Christendom itself. And unlike the voluntary streaming of people and peace that Isaiah describes here in chapter 2, the popes sought to establish a kingdom of force. And so that's why we have the period of the Crusades and the Inquisition and other such events. So if it's not there, then where then is the mountain of the house of the Lord? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the key to unlocking this mystery is in words found directly in the text, in the latter days. Now, the error of the first century Jews, and even of some modern Christians today, is in thinking that those words, in the latter days, were the Old Testament people, the, the moment that the Old Testament people were looking forward to, is the time that we are still looking forward to today. That this time is still in the future even for us. But remember what the writer to to the Hebrews wrote. He says, In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. In these last days. Every day since the resurrection and every day since the ascension of Jesus until his second coming is one of these last days. There is nothing yet still to be accomplished for our salvation between now and then. Jesus has already done it. And so just as St. Paul says in the epistle for this morning, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. We do know the time. We are living now even in the last days. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know that the time is now. The prophet Isaiah also spoke of people freely streaming to the mountain of the house of the Lord, where they would be taught by God, where they would walk in the paths of God himself. Well, so much for an earthly kingdom being brought about by force, Remember the words of Jesus himself, my kingdom is not of this world, he says to Pilate. Jesus says that from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven doesn't commit violence, but it suffers violence. He warns against those who are going to come and try and take it by force. The mountain of the house of the Lord is the place where God dwells. It is where he is enthroned. It is where he reveals himself to his people. The mountain of the house of the Lord is where God's people gather around his word. The mountain of the house of the Lord is right here. It is right here, here in his church, where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is also. And so it kind of feels cool that you and I are, are a part of Isaiah's fulfillment of this prophecy that's 2,700 years old as we sit here even now. Now, a first century Jew might argue if he were standing here before us today that the world that we know it hardly represents a picture of peace. And we might even agree, right, if we look at the world around us. But what did the Christmas angels proclaim outside of Bethlehem? Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Some Christians today, they might argue that the understanding of Isaiah chapter 2 in terms of the Christian church does not take, take the text literally or it doesn't take the text seriously enough. But what does Isaiah say? His own words, out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Do we have to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to hear the word of God? 
or does the Lord come to us in his word from Jerusalem to the nations? The risen Christ commanded his disciples just before his ascension to proclaim repentance, to proclaim the forgiveness of sins to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem and then going out from there throughout the world. And that's exactly what happened. The word, the promise of salvation through Christ's sacrifice on the cross went out from Jerusalem to every sinner around the world. And even today, around the world, people of every language and tribe and nation, they come to the house of the Lord, and guess what? They are doing exactly what Isaiah prophesied. They are being taught the word of God, and they are walking in his paths. That word which began in Jerusalem comes to you and to me today, brothers and sisters. And although you and I fall under the same judgment which God spoke to his people through Isaiah, God has done something for us. He has pardoned us, his people. He has issued a stay of execution, if you will, for the sake of the one who was condemned in our place, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But he did not stay dead. Risen from the dead, Jesus comes to you and to me this day, and he declares, you are forgiven. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Just as the Old Testament church, we still look forward with a sure and certain hope that the last day will come, a day when God will put to end all earthly war and strife and suffering, when he will remove all sin, when he will wipe away every tear from our eyes, when there will be only peace and when there will be only joy in the presence of our Lord forever and ever. But unlike the Old Testament believers, we know that the age of Christ's second coming is the culmination of what has already begun, what has already been started through him. Isaiah got to view the mountain from a distance. But we actually dwell on that mountain. Right here, right now, as brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the last days. The light has come into the world. And even now, there is forgiveness and peace. Peace with God and peace with, what an and peace with one another. What a note to begin a new church year on. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, Isaiah reminds us that the Lord is faithful to his promises and faithful he is. And yes, we still live in a world that is ravaged by war and disease and calamity. A world that is still certainly in bondage to sin and death. And it is far from glory. But God dwells even now in his house. In this house. Among his people. And he reveals himself to us through his word. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the singing of our offertory hymn.
In our prayers this morning, we will remember the Lazel family along with Doug and the Cuffert family. Um, for, we will also uh, remember in our prayers healing um, from liver disease for Wayne, also healing for Nan, uh, Thanksgiving for healing for John. And that is it for this morning. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Stir up your power, O Lord, to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world by the advent of your Son, that we may ever walk in his light and learn the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or the hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, that we may be constantly encouraged and built up in the faith. O God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all nations unto yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness, that husbands and wives may love one another and raise their children in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president, governor, legislature, to all who make and administer and judge our laws. Grant peace among the nations, that swords may be beaten to plowshares and spears to pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, look with mercy upon the sick, the suffering, the mourning, the dying, the recovering, and all those that we remember today. Visit them during these Advent days to comfort them with your saving gospel. If it be your will, grant healing and peace. Especially, we remember this morning, Wayne, Nan, John, the Lazel family, Doug, and the Cuffert family, and all those for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith, that we may ever be ready for his reappearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, and give to you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Once He Came in Blessing.
If you look on the back page of your announcements, um, you will see the things that are happening this week. There is one correction on that schedule. Um, it says on there that Christmas decorating is on Saturday at 9 a.m. Strike that. It is going to be on Friday at 5 p.m. It also says Altar Guild. That is because Altar Guild is the boss. Um, but we need lots and lots of help. And so if you are willing and or able to come, um, even if you can't set up the trees, that's fine. Uh, hang ornaments, wreaths, um, as we decorate uh, the sanctuary and the rest of the church space in preparation for Christmas. That is this coming Friday at 5 p.m. We would love for you to join us for that. Don't listen to me. See, I was even given a paper with the proper time, and I thought I knew better, but I didn't. I should just read the notes. Friday at 6 p.m. Friday at 6 p.m. If you show up at 5, we will not have dinner for you. I'm sorry. Friday at 6 p.m., 6 o'clock. Also, poinsettia, or for those of you that say it correctly, poinsettias. I think that's how they say it. Uh, the order forms are in the back. Um, on the, uh, the table in the back there, um, they are $10 per plant. Um, we are limited in the number of plants that we have this year. I believe we have four dozen. Um, you may make them, uh, or you may purchase them, excuse me, and in honor or in memory of someone or something. Um, and the form for that is in the back. You can fill that out and get it either to uh, Monica in the office or even to Paulette. Um, let's see, there are a couple other things going on this week. Uh, we have our Advent midweek service. We meet here at 4.30. Now that's the right time, okay? 4.30 on Wednesday for our soup supper. Um, and if you are willing and able to bring uh, a pot of soup or bread or dessert, we would love for you to do that. Otherwise, just come and eat and um, join us as we share in a meal together. And then we will come in here at 6 o'clock for a time of worship um, as uh, we give praise to God um, and prepare our hearts for his return. Um, there are some other things in here. Please take a look at that. I'm not going to go through all of it because you guys can read it at home. But there's some very valuable information in there. Um, lastly, um, for those that have children... Um, please let them go through the line first so that they can come back in here um, as they prepare for the children's Christmas program. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>